And so this first page is Hiring Process KPIs. And it's a collection of uh, several different KPIs that reflect aggregate measurements of um, cost and time and some different counts of things that are happening in the process. And then down at the bottom of those three groups of KPIs, if you'll scroll down just a little bit, depending on your browser, um, this may already be in view, but scroll down just a, lit, a little bit and you'll see the instance widget that's down there that shows the individual line items for each process instance that has run. So at the top, uh, you have several cost KPIs for different um, tasks that we're measuring. The two main human tasks in the process, and it's just a very short process, you'll see a diagram in a minute, but the um, average cost, the labor, and the resource cost for those, and then for the actual submission of the job re requisition for a new employee um, or a new position, then we're also doing a measurement of that submission cost and the labor and resource cost behind that. So the KPIs that we're using at the top uh, for sample here are just set up with a normal and a high range. Um, the, um, the light green and the blue are the teal and the, the pinkish color here. The dark line, of course, like for all KPIs, is the actual value in real time. And then the white line is the target. And so you can just have a look at where these different values fall. You can use the, um, the, the different visualizations that are available just by clicking on those. Uh, the default uh, view that I have set up is the, uh, is the bar gauge view at the top. The next group down um, in the, the uh, KPIs is those that are measuring time. And so we have four time ranges set up, excellent, good, fair, and poor. And we've got those ranges set differently for the different times that we're expecting things to happen. Again, if you look at the, uh, the dark arrow, you'll see the value in minutes and seconds. Uh, the absolute numbers here don't really mean much. Um, the, the point is that we can measure this type of thing and track it uh, for, for process tasks and groups of process tasks, depending on what you've got set up in your business process diagram uh, in BPM 8.5. So you'll get these KPIs when you generate your monitor model. The last set of KPIs is for counting uh, different things, different um, metrics that we're keeping up with. So how many of the candidates um, that we looked at got rejected? How many are approved? How many uh, do we have to go outside to find? And so on. Now for any of these KPIs, um, and I'm going to use this last one, um, this last group called counts to show this, uh, these are uh, interacting widgets and so they're wired together so if I want to click at the upper right area of any of the KPIs like I'm about to do for this KPI called count find job candidates I can click the down arrow and say show me the instances that are relevant for this KPI so you'll see in this find job candidates KPI I've got a value of three uh, you'll see the instance widget at the very bottom shows all nine um, instances that we found so if I click Show Instances, it will get filtered down to those three uh, that are relevant for this KPI. So that's really nice to have a dynamic way of saying, oh, well, this is what the KPI is today. How did it get to be that? What are the relevant actual processes and who are they about and what's the status of them? Then I can immediately find out what those are by looking at an instance widget. The Requisition Reports page takes me to 10 different Cognos reports where we're carving up some of the information in those uh, process instances in different ways. Um, and we don't have but a few fields that we're collecting during the running of this process, selecting who the hiring manager is, what location the new employee would be, what department is it for, where will they need to work, when do we need them to start, that sort of thing, what pay level are they going to be at. Um, and then we're carving up the, um, the data in different ways based on those dimensions. So if you'll just sort of scroll through down these, you'll see some examples. So the, the hiring recs by hiring manager, by location, by department. Um, a hiring rec may have more than one employee, so uh, there's also a metric for the total number of employees that are being requested. 
So we've got a report here that shows us the total employees that have been requested by uh, any location. Uh, total employees by title. So we've got some customer service reps being requested, finance associates, HR advisors, and so on. And we can look at the number of each. So this just it gives you an example of some of the real flexibility that you have in looking at the data and being able to create reports about uh, the processes that you're running. Um, the other reports show you um, counts uh, about different uh, metrics. These two at the bottom here are, are measuring uh, elapsed time about the process. Uh, this one says, um, you know, why is it taking a pay level eight much longer to run through the hiring process than it is others. So there might be a valid reason for that, maybe not. Uh, this one on the right says, um, we have the Philadelphia location taking much, much longer to run through its uh, hiring process than other locations. So different ways to chop up the data and have a look at that. This next example called hiring reports plus instances uh, sort of repeats the concept that you saw in KPIs where you might want to drill down on a piece of data that you see in a report and understand what specific instances are responsible for that data. So if we look at um, this requisitions by department, we'll see that uh, this um, orange column represents the requisitions for the marketing department. And so we can right click on that column and say show instances. We can go over in the cell that describes those requisitions and say we know there are two of them. Which two are they? So out of potentially thousands of rows in the, the instances, uh, we'll say show instances and we'll immediately see those two narrowed down just to the marketing department. So a nice way to go from a, a very graphical, um, visually friendly chart to uh, some low-level detail about what, what uh, went into that data. When you generate a monitor model from BPM 85, you get a process diagram as part of your monitor model. And this diagram shows you uh, several KPIs that are relevant to the tasks that are in the process diagram or the BPD. And so uh, you'll see here that we're getting several time measurements, average total time, execution, and wait time, and then average uh, cost, resource cost, and labor cost for the tasks that are in the, the diagram. Now, the only ones that you'll see in here that have numbers are the human tasks. Uh, just we didn't populate the other ones, um, but they could be. So uh, if we click the radio buttons for average total time, you see the numbers appear over the task for the time measurement. And then if you click another one, they've used a different color to denote that you've changed uh, the metric that you're, the measurement that you're looking at. And so for cost, um, we can get an idea of where the high cost tasks or activities are in the process and understand these averages. Now these are KPIs, so we might also have these measured in a gauge somewhere uh, in a different place, but this is just a different visual way to reference it based on, um, you know, being familiar with the BPD and understanding what's happening in the process diagram. Another example of using a custom diagram is this um, next page called a map of total employees requested. And this uses a, a scalar vector graphics and SVG diagram of the United States and then has a little building image. We've put a little building image in the name of the city for each of the locations that the process participant can choose when they're opening a new rec, and then depending on the number of employees they choose for that uh, requisition, it'll show up here on this map. And so the green teal color says that uh, no, no new employer requisitions have been requested, have been entered, um, and for those that have, then the state in which the office is located will turn blue, and a number representing the number of employees requested will appear um, you know, near that location. So we have one in Seattle, seven in Los Angeles, and two in Atlanta, and so on. And these other little images were just added on top of the diagram for visual um, purposes. If we get over 10 employees requested at a single location, then we've had the diagram uh, change that, that uh, shape for the state uh, 
annotate it uh, with the color red instead of blue. And so you have some different ways that you can show information uh, moving and changing as data changes uh, based on what's happening in the real time events that are flowing in from the process instances. You can imagine um, we've already showed one example where we're using this diagram notion with the process diagram and updating it with text on top of it. Here we're updating it with uh, colors and annotated text. Um, there's some other combination of actions that you can take to use with a diagram that are, um, that are nice as well. So several options that you can think about there. This last page I want to show you is the, the instance widget by itself, a little more detail of course, but if you sort of scroll across here, you'll see lots of metric data that's being captured um, when you run one of these uh, process instances. All of the metrics that we uh, entered as a process participant are captured along the way, and then a lot of the system data about how long it took to do different parts of the, uh, the process are also captured and are you know, available to be measured and, and analyzed. Um, sometimes we, um, we might want to filter this manually as we're, maybe our role has us looking for certain instances. And so one way to do that is to use this dynamic filter uh, on each of the column headings. So if we wanted to look, uh, for instance, at the instances that are related to the sales department, we could click on this filter column. It defaults to equals and then we can type in the word sales, press enter, and then our instance widget is automatically filtered just to show us those from the sales department. We can use that um, on any of the column headings, any of the metrics that we're collecting. And then we can clear that simply by clicking this uh, eraser button and going back to the default view. So we can do that dynamically. We can go into the, the settings if we're authorized and filter. I have several different instance widgets that are pre-filtered depending on the role of the user just to show certain instances that are relevant for what they need to do. So that concludes this quick demo for the dashboards for the BPM 8.5 hiring process.